Representative Ilhan Omar demands GOP leaders address anti-Muslim rhetoric. Over the Thanksgiving holiday, Colorado Republican House Representative Lauren Boebert made incendiary statements where she likened her fellow representative Ilhan Omar of Minnesota to a suicide bomber. Shortly before this incident, during a speech on the floor of Congress, she called Representative Omar a member of the Jihad Squad. Omar quickly called for House leaders to take action against Lauren Boebert. To demonstrate the impact of Boebert's rhetoric, she played a recording of a death threat left on her voicemail during a news conference. She also asked House Republican leaders to address the anti-Muslim sentiments held in their ranks. Quote, when a sitting member of Congress calls a, mem a colleague, a member of the Jihad Squad, and falsifies a story to suggest I will blow up the Capitol, it is not only an, just an attack on me, but millions of American Muslims across the country, Omar said. We cannot pretend this hate speech from leading politicians doesn't have real consequences, she added. Boebert has apologized to the American Muslim community, but has not yet apologized to Omar personally. Yeah, first of all, this was disgusting. Uh, can I play the video? Is it okay to play? Or are we going to um, get in trouble? Yeah, I don't see why mm -hmm. not. It, this is covered okay. widely. By the way, this lady... Uh, she's you guys psycho. Are in, she's crazy. Like, this is your politician. Like, like you know, you know, like we keep making fun of like other politicians of other countries, but you guys, like, how did you manage to get these Susie? You should be ashamed. Like somebody like this in Canada would never be able to become a politician, right? Okay. Like this she said from Colorado. Okay. I can only take responsibilities for the representatives in my district. Okay. I would be embarrassed if I was you. So I'm sorry. I would be embarrassed. Like, look I mean, what I you guys am. are doing. Do you think I'm proud like, of having I'm Matt kidding. Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene running around the floors of Congress? It's insane. Wait, it says watch on Twitter. Like if I click on it, would it play it here? Okay, hold on. There's no audio. Did you mute the tab again? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I did. Here. One more time. Actually, I have an Ilhan story for you. So <laughs> oh, man. she's treating it like um, it's a stand-up so, set. Uh, the other night on the House floor was not the, my first Jihad Squad moment. Uh, so I was getting into an elevator with one of my staffers. And he and I are, we're leaving the Capitol, we're going back to my office, and we get in the elevator, and I see a Capitol Police officer running hurriedly to the elevator. I see fret all over his face, and he's reaching, and I'm like, what? I can't, the door's shutting, like, I can't, I can't open it. Like, what's happening? I look to my left, and there she is, Ilhan Omar. And I said, well... She doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. Oh. <laughs> this <is a> politician. <laughs> like this is a politician. Like this is not a like comedian or something. Like this is like you guys know how embarrassing this is. I only had one floor to go, and I was like, uh, do I say it or not? I looked over, and I said, oh look, the Jihad Squad decided to show up for work today. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, I do. I, I Not do to mention wanna... that story is a straight up lie. Yeah. <laughs> Ilhan Omar what tweeted you... that she's like, when Bobert sees me around Congress, she doesn't even look me in the eye. Like she just looks at the ground like she's afraid. Guys, I was kidding when I said she should be ashamed. OK, Susanna, like saying, why should Susanna be ashamed? The Democrats. And the American Muslims should be ashamed for supporting this low life. No, um, Megan Woman is talking oh. about Ilhan Omar. Oh my God, what are you talking about? Okay, so compared okay. to this, she has her problems. Yeah. Obviously, yes. she's got a lot of problems. Yeah, no. Compared to compared to her, first of all, I did. I was joking about Susanna needing to be ashamed. Okay, obviously Susanna didn't vote for this idiot. Uh, second of all. Like, yeah, we have criticism of Ilan Omar, but today I want to praise Ilan Omar because she has said nothing. Has she, like, like, look, on this issue, she has been very, very well. For, and she's been getting, like, you're, you're saying, a low, you're saying for supporting this low life after she's getting death threats like this? Like, what are you talking about? First of all, somebody, Ilan Omar has not said anything or done anything that would justify us calling her a low life. 
Like she has done things and said things that was she ju- done some really let, sketchy things. Let me finish. Right. Some things, not okay. Sketchy, Susanna. She has done things that are worthy of criticism, but not saying this low life. Like she's not like what? What does she? What has she done that would cut, would justify us calling her a low life? Is there a job that a million dollars into her husband's company? Okay, I'll let you... her campaign. I don't know if I potentially I don't know if um potentially okay marrying if those her brother are... to get him in the country. Yeah, okay. If those are if those are proven beyond a reasonable doubt to be true, okay. I I every every time I've seen that is from like sources that you know I don't trust, but I'm not saying it didn't happen, okay. Um I'm talking about politics and her political views, right? And they're, because those do not impact. Yeah, okay. So if those are true, those are illegal, okay? And should be investigated. I don't know how much of it is true because I've, it's given how right leaning people are motivated to go after anybody with the hijab on their head. Um, I would excuse me if I'm skeptical, okay? I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just saying, excuse me if I'm skeptical, okay? Because of, because of no, I appreciate because, that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes, but okay, but just if you if you zoom in on this story alone, okay, she she's getting death threats, okay, for being a Muslim, right? Um, I'm not even going to read what is being said here. Should I even read? Like, we could get into serious trouble if I read the death threats she's getting, like the language that is being used, okay. Um, I'm glad that they recorded it and played it, but let me just see what she's what Elon is saying here. I'm going to play you a voicemail. Oh. Wait, can we play that? Yeah. She doesn't give commentary in this clip, she's just playing it. So, can are we gonna get in trouble for playing this audio? I don't think so. I think, should I play it? I'm just gonna play, I it. think it's fine that we received hours after I got off the phone with Representative Bulbert after she posted her video. We see you, Muslim son of your bitch. We know what you're up to. You're all about to enter the country. Don't worry, there's plenty that will love the opportunity to take you off the face of the fucking earth. Come get it, bitch, you fucking Muslim piece of shit, you jihadist. We know what you are. You're a fucking traitor. You will not live much longer, bitch. I can almost guarantee you that. We the people are rising up, and you will be tried for a military tribunal, and you will be found guilty. For those of you who did not hear it very well, let me read you. She just goes on to her voice yeah, repeat it. All right, let me actually address what this. What, let me address this really quickly, okay? I have criticized Elon Omar for this. Okay, she, you're saying I've never supported deference against Elon Omar. Okay, well that's what we're talking about right now. Okay, uh, but she opposed the recognition of the Armenian geno- genocide. She's corrupt. She also promotes Erdogan agendas in the U.S. Okay, so I criticize her for that. Um, but this is like this is a major disagreement I have with Ilan Omar that th- she was one of the few people that did not vote for the recognition of the Armenian genocide. But if you want to, um, and, and again, that's a very legit criticism. But if you want to call her a low life for that, then you would have to consider the entirety of the uh, of Israel's. Like, would you consider every Israeli politician also a low life because none of them have moved forward? With considering uh, Armenian recognizing the Armenian genocide, like that's a major problem in Israel. The country that is responsible, the entire p- country that is responsible for existing, be- to save people from a, the most famous genocide in history, with with the motto of "never forget, never forget," has forgotten ha- is one of the ma- countries that puts politics, political interests ahead of human rights and does not recognize the Armenian genocide because of the relationship with Turkey. The entirety of the government of Israel. And it's such so hypocritical that the country 
that is founded upon saving people from genocide with with museums all around the world funding museums all around the world for for with the goal of people not forgetting has actively has forgotten the armenian genocide okay so we will criticize everybody for this okay but in this context like if you want to like open the door to other things like are you consistent with that or would you criticize them for that or we call every single one of them a low life like that's like i think stretching it okay so again we're consistent i complete i'm completely against Elon Omar's position for not recognizing the armenian genocide but within the context of the story if somebody is like like i'm pretty sure i have views that a lot of you disagree with okay if somebody is giving me a death threat, I'm assuming a lot of you will not use that, uh, come at that moment and say like, well, Armin has this view, right? Like, think about, think about that. Think about like, if somebody like gives a death threat against Susanna, and then you choose that moment to bring up the fact that Susanna has some views that you don't agree with. Like, what that doesn't seem like it's Damn. a fair point to <laughs> like, Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a very yeah, good but, point. I mean, like, um, we, like, we should no, criticize these politicians, but it's not necessarily the topic of discussion right now. Armin, you had an interesting take. No, but you're missing the point. Look at this missing the point. Like, I'm not a fan of Israeli politicians either. Yes, but if somebody brings up, like, wants to annihilate, like, the entire country, you wouldn't use that. You wouldn't say, like, well, Israeli politicians don't recognize the Armenian genocide. Like, what are you saying? Like, it. I know you're not saying this, but it's it's you're like I'm not I'm not defending the death threats. But then why are you bringing that disagreement at the time when somebody's getting a death threat? You you say you're not supporting the death threat, but it doesn't seem like the right time to bring it up. Like it doesn't it seems like you're indirectly, even maybe not intentionally, supporting the death threat. We're talking about a death threat. Okay, we're talking about anti-Muslim bigotry. That is not highlighting the disagreements you have with somebody at the moment when somebody is being uh, experiencing bigotry to this level sh m makes it seem like it would be justified even if you're not saying it because you have those disagreements with them okay uh, but go on Susanna sorry I interrupted you well I wanted to um, get back into the topic at hand because you made a post recently where you were praising oh, yeah. Ilhan Omar for her the language that she used there we go would you like me to read this or should I? Go ahead. Okay, so I'll read the tweet from Ilhan Omar first so we know the context. She's saying, um, fact, this buffoon looks down when she sees me at the Capitol. This whole story is made up. Sad, she thinks bigotry gets her clout. Anti-Muslim bigotry isn't funny and it shouldn't be normalized. Congress can't be a place where hateful and dangerous Muslim tropes get no condemnation. And Armin says... I'm so grateful that Ilhan Omar is correctly identifying the problem. It's not Islamophobia. It's not racism. It's anti-Muslim bigotry. You can't tackle a problem if you don't know what it is. Um, yeah. Okay, so I keep going back and forth on this. Like, it's a little bit like the, the, the line, because it seems like a bad idea to me as well, even though I do it. Um, to bring up attention to the language that you're supposed to use um, when, like for example, if somebody is trying to bring attention to anti-Muslim bigotry and instead of calling it anti-Muslim bigotry, they're calling it Islamophobia, all right? And we know that that's a very inaccurate way of describing it, especially because you're addressing people's problem with Islam, you're, you know, instead of attacks on Muslims, okay? Like there is a difference between we attacking Islam and people being anti-Muslim bigots. We have discussed that so many times here before, okay? And when you use the term Islamophobia, um, you know, we're not just trying to be picky about the use of language. We actually think it helps people. Um, it, it increases anti-Muslim bigotry because the people who want to defend Islam instead of defending Muslims, uh, we use the term Islamophobia to bring attention to cases like this so that they could mix attacks against Muslims with people making fun of um, or criticizing Islam to make it seem like they're the same thing. But And by mixing those things together, a lot of people are going to take 
accusations of anti-Muslim bigotry a, a lot less seriously, right? Because then defending Muslims and all of a sudden people see that as a contradic as as contradicting our of a free speech or the right to criticize a religion. Like the, you're basically blurring the lines to for so, so for people who are who want to support free speech, uh, who want to support like us being able to criticize religion, they think like every person who's trying to defend Muslims is, you know, like, look at this. L let me show you how stupid people are, okay? I'm sorry for highlighting. Look at this. Look at this comment. If disliking religion makes you a bigot now, okay, I guess disliking religion makes you a bigot now. Like, look at how confused people are, right, under my post. I'm saying like this is not Islamophobia. This is anti-Muslim bigotry, and this person is so like doesn't understand. Like, oh, I guess disliking religion makes you a bigot now. Like, I'm specific in a post that I'm specifically separating attacks on Muslims for criticizing religion. This person thinks that I'm accusing them of being a bigot because they dislike a religion, right? Like, what was another person? Um, no, there was another person that I can't see anymore here. Oh, yeah, here's another one. Look at this. Organized religion is a cancer on humanity. If it makes me a bigot, then I'm a bigot. Again, under, oh my a, post God. That, under, a, under, under a post that I'm specifically separating attack on Muslim from criticizing a religion, these people are like, oh, I guess you're calling me a bigot for like disliking a religion. Like This is how dumb people are. And this is why it's so important to not call this Islamophobia, right? Because if you... If you like. Um, even when you're calling it anti-Muslim bigotry and are, you're careful not to call it Islamophobia, people are still being confused about it. People still think like I'm telling them that they can't criticize Islam. Like even even when you spell it out for them, that's how that's how dumb people are. Okay, but so from both sides, the people who want to criticize Islam, uh, if you call it Islamophobia. Uh, instead of anti-Muslim bigotry, every time we want to defend Muslims, they were like, oh, you're just being anti-free speech. And on the other side, people who want to actually attack Muslims, if you call it Islamophobia, then what you're going to do, then you're going to make give them the power to use how stupid and barbaric Islam is as a way to use it as a way to attack Muslims. Okay, so that's the th second group of people. And the third group of people are Islam, the Islam defenders, who want who don't have any logical reasons to to defend this this barbaric violent um harmful ideology as a as a way to use muslims as shields because they don't have any good logics to defend them they will have to put muslim bodies in front of islam as a way to suggest that you going after islam you have to basically go through these people you're attacking muslims if you attack islam by blurring their lines by confusing attacks against islam with attacks against muslims they're literally using muslims they the harm and the misery of the muslim community they're using muslims who are defending islam are using other muslims misery and using increasing their misery the attacks more bigotry against them they're, they're increasing that as a way to shield Islam from attacks themselves. And this is why I sometimes think like it's important. It's important for us to get the terminology correct and use, use the term anti-Muslim bigotry instead of Islamophobia. So I really appreciate that Ilan Omar seems to have not used the Islamophobia. Like, she, like the fact that somebody like her is constantly saying anti-Muslim bigotry, like is she aware of the problem of the word? Like, Islamophobia, why does she still keep using anti-Muslim bigotry? Like, I am very impressed. I'm very happy that she's normally normalizing that language instead of Islamophobia. Like, why is she? Why is this happening? Is she aware of that? I think like, maybe yeah. it's been used enough that it's starting to actually get popularized. I'm excited because she's a major Muslim American figure, and she's yeah. modeling that behavior for others. That's awesome. I am this is very good. Like whatever you want to say about Ilan Omar, the fact that she's normalizing the use of the word anti-Muslim bigotry is really good. However, sometimes I'm skeptical of my own position because you don't want to take it. Like if you want to language police people on what terms to use, are you taking attention away from what actually the, pro the problem is? Right? So like, let's say like people are like, Oh, Muslims are being attacked and there's bigotry and there's like um, discrimination. 
and oh this is like and somebody refers to it as islamophobic if you like hey it's not islamophobia and anti-muslim bigotry are you missing the point here right are you like people are being attacked and you're correcting my language like so sometimes i feel like maybe i shouldn't like focus on like telling people to use anti-muslim bigotry instead of um uh, islamophobia but but again it's important because you i think the using the correct language here actually my argument is like maybe it is important because um it's not about taking attention away from the, the attacks it's being better at fighting it right it's a it's you it's like it's not like it's not missing the point it's actually using the better language to to arm people against anti-muslim bigotry more effectively so i don't think but i think you have to be careful about how you do it right like for example let's say you're on a panel with a muslim person or somebody a leftist or somebody and they're talking about the situation in china okay uh, and how muslims are being oppressed there and say and then refer to it as islamophobia okay you, um you don't want to change the entire conversation to be like hey 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 that's not anti that's not islamophobia that's anti-muslim bigotry you don't want to make that the highlight of the conversation given the most important part of this conversation is the harm that the muslims are experiencing however i think like if you could just like touch up on it just lightly and just move on without actually making it the entire subject i think it's fine i think that's the balance that i'm like I, like i think if i was on a, such a panel i would be like yes i completely agree this is like this is the world needs to pay more attention china the ccp not china the ccp needs to be held accountable for these crimes and i refer to it as um anti-muslim bigotry not islamophobia but yes i completely agree and then move on right like just like it's a slight touch like hey the current, like, this is what i use but uh, then move on i just don't i wouldn't make it the highlight but i would try to bring a limited amount of attention to it and then move on that's that's where i that's where i'm at right now yeah and yeah. i just want to say i think um you expressed all of that beautifully oh thank you thank you thank you explained it very um, well let's let's read this one before we before i prepare the next Megan woman is saying i agree with you and ilhan on this anti-muslim bigotry is the right term while we're at it we need to prevent it from extending to criticism of islam as a religion yes true, true, true. hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.